We're going to talk about TNA Impact this week, and indeed, we had a recap of Sting attacking Jarrett after their confrontation, and indeed, Jarrett caught a promo. I'm really glad Jeff Jarrett has a place on the TNA product now. He has never uh, failed to impress on the mic in the ring. He certainly can look a bit rusty after a long break, but after a couple of weeks back on television, Jeff Jarrett looking fantastic in the ring and no problems there whatsoever. He can work. Yeah, Jarrett's great. I, I, I loved Impact this week, I have to say. I thought they did a terrific, terrific job. And I love the start with that Sting and, and Jarrett thing running through the, the backstage and up the stairs and all that mumbo-jumbo. But um, it was old school. It really brought me back and it was really well done. And it, was, it really did deliver what TNA is and that's total non-stop action. I thought this week for a solid two hours of programming, so um, good job to everybody there. And that, it was just, a, it was total non-stop. I loved it. It was great. I, I also agree that I loved how they filmed in the backstage up at the rafters where Sting usually hangs out. And indeed, that new shot as they come down the stairs, something they're taking advantage of. And it does look good. Lo nice to see the camera is going to places in the arena that we've never actually really seen that much. And indeed, there's plenty there that hasn't been unveiled yet. It's amazing, really, to think how long we've been there. And I'm still noticing new things. And, of course, they're changing that impact zone all the time. Now, Team Flair were backstage. And Ric Flair cut a promo. This is where I have to say it's a joyous moment to see Beer Money and Desmond Wolf and those young guys guys in there with flair this is the time of their lives this is their career moment that i'm sure they're going to look back on with fondness yeah absolutely and you can you can even tell when i saw that segment come up my first thoughts were of the flair dvd and the classic old four horsemen clips and uh just how great they were and how you would just watch all of them because they were hilarious because flair was involved with them but i thought all of those guys even aj who was last to cut the promo there and i was a bit worried about you aj but you delivered and uh yeah i thought it was a classic old school four horsemen vibe everybody was completely on form with the promos from wolf to both the uh, storm and rude and flair especially and then aj even turned it up a notch unexpectedly so yeah they kept that show running and that was a great segment definitely yeah, indeed. Team 3D back in the Impact Arena. And these guys sort of looking a bit tired to me now. They've been consistently involved in a storyline, never wanting for a place on the roster or indeed on television for a long, long time now. And maybe it is time to sort of step off and maybe give somebody else a try at this stage because, I don't know, it's just getting old to me now. Team 3D always in some sort of feud and, you know, they're heel one week and they're baby face the next. It's just impossible to uh, keep up with those guys. They took on the band, Kevin Nash, Six Pack and Scott Hall in a street fight that really did get sort of uh, violent in ring, but not too much and indeed uh, nothing too impressive. I did like to see Scott Hall in that streetwear, though. He he didn't look too much like a wrestler. I think Nash wanted to keep the gimmick going. And indeed, Six Pack echoing those thoughts as well. But what, what did stand out to me about this match was Jesse Neal. Now, Jesse Neal, a guy who was initially just a soldier, a recruit, something. And indeed, made over by Team 3D, I think, at their wrestling school. And came back a different guy, different look, probably can work. But then I realized that Shannon Moore has stolen his gimmick yeah i mean they're very very similar they're very similar um i think shannon moore is overworking that whole punk thing i mean uh if you saw him back in his wwe days it was a a different story and maybe he wanted to stand up and get noticed and he's certainly done that and uh even with that match with Kazarian on Impact was terrific and really showcased both of them and just how good he is. I mean, you can write these guys off. We're not wrestlers. We don't really know what it's like in there. But uh, it's easy to write them off and it's easy to put them down from an outside point of view. And people will praise and people will uh, criticize the product. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Shannon Moore, he is actually a really good wrestler if, if, if you paid attention to that match. But getting back to um, this 3D match... Um, it was again non-stop madness and all of those first segments 
I was glued, I was hooked. I was like, this impact is kicking ass and it's about fucking time. Absolutely, and then Bubba coming out, he botched this spot because he took too long. He almost begged uh, Brother Ray to let him come in the ring with Brother Ray on top of the ropes. Bubba was the finish. His interference was the reason that uh, Brother Ray ended up losing. But certainly uh, Bubba probably needing a bit of rehearsal on those angles because, like I say, he almost pleaded with him in, in, in a, a no-word fashion, can I come into the ring? And indeed, five seconds later, uh, the finish could have happened by then, <laughs> but certainly Brother Ray uh, played it well and he sold it, you know. Where was Spike Dudley? Didn't, didn't he come back recently? Good point. Had that written there? Yeah, I suppose that Jesse Neal needs to get uh, put over. Absolutely, and yeah, that's probably it. Spike Dudley losing his place to Jesse Neal, and indeed, maybe they uh, only had Spike for perhaps a one-time appearance to see what it was uh, going to be like. I want to say hi to all the people in the JustIn.TV live chat, and uh, yeah, there's a few people in there. Dre Smith uh, having a shite, uh, HBK Forever 85, uh, JM Script, and a couple of more people that are not signed in. I can look here, but indeed easier to read it back there. Continuing uh, with TNA this week, and Christy Hemi, she's been in the news. She's a backstage announcer at TNA. We all know her well, uh, indeed, from those uh, appearances in the WWE a couple of years back. And indeed, apparently some heat in the locker room. She is getting a big money deal. A lot more than the other knockouts. All speculation. But I certainly think that's got to be true. Christy Hemi, uh, indeed, high profile. Christy is high profile and uh, a glamorous lady if there ever was one. Uh, 130 grand is the rumoured figure uh, for old Christy. And uh, the knockouts, uh, not too happy about it all. I think uh, Kong or ODB, somebody said uh, $400 a match when they were used on Impact was the paying uh, or the going rate for some of those knockouts. So you can imagine uh, the beautiful people, I'm sure, aren't too happy about it. Yeah, they had a big role on this week's TNA and indeed nice to see them both getting a sort of a payoff feud. Velvet Sky and Angelina Love now facing off. And indeed, they had a leather and lace match this week. And indeed, Velvet, I mean, stepped it up on the, the old dress. And indeed, uh, Angelina Love always looking athletic and indeed can work very, very well. Certainly covers a lot for Velvet. But uh, yeah, I mean, Angelina always been considered the better worker of the pair. But like I say, different skills with Velvet Sky.